Hi class, my name is Lexi and I'm going to be talking about By the Lake of Sleeping Children, The Secret Life of the Mexican Border, which is a book that I read for this class. Um, this is take, um, I think, number eight now, so hopefully this one goes a little bit better. I just keep getting excited about the book and then going off on tangents. But rather than a normal story where you would have like an introduction and then a climax and then a resolution at the end. This is actually a series of 16 individual essays written about different aspects of life right on the border. And so the author is a Mexican and an American. He has dual citizenship. He is Mexican, speaks Spanish, but happens to be very white looking. So his experiences are a little bit different than the average Mexican citizen living at the border at that time. Um, <clears throat> and they go through his past a little bit too. But basically it's about this contrast of people that are living right at the border. They're living in a garbage dump where babies are being buried in the same place that they have to find food in a dump to survive and feed themselves and their children. And it's right next to the billboards for California in the skyscrapers and the bright lights. And <clears throat> those are really, really stark contrast and very humbling, I believe. So the 16 essays are all pretty different and they give you a lot of different insight. One of them is about orphanages, one is about how people treat animals. That one made my heart hurt. But it was also really good, I think, it's so easy to just be like ethnocentric and be like, they're cruel people, they are not good parents, they are doing awful things. <clears throat> and it's really important to remember that you're really just viewing the world through the lens of your own culture. And I had to get out of that mindset several times during this book. So um, I highlighted pretty much everything. But there's a really powerful part on page 126, which focuses on how these people are living in absolute squalor. They're just not hygienic. They are not healthy. They don't have homes. Some of them are homeless or are running around rampant, people can be very aggressive, but that is their way of life. And you have these missionaries that come in and they're so excited to make a difference. A lot of them are very young and they just wanna help. And that's great. And that sometimes was very misguided. So these people would come in, these missionaries, and they would bring the kids candy, which is awesome, but what's candy when you need food? And what is candy when you don't have a toothbrush and all you're doing is causing their teeth to decay? They didn't really go into that, but that one I really noticed. But sometimes the missionaries would think they're being really great and they would bring puppies for the orphanages. But how are you supposed to feed a puppy when you can't feed your children? And a really powerful line on page 127 about that was often animals suffer because their masters suffer. And it was really sad because that also relates to children. These children suffer because their parents suffer. And it's just a cycle of suffering and really struggling to survive rather than thriving. And that was really powerful. Um, yeah, so I thought that that was really interesting. There was um, quite a bit on orphanages and how difficult the adoption process is if you wanted to adopt a child from the Mexican-American border and about how corrupt the process is to get into America. And um, at one point it said that the KKK had volunteered their time to help rid the border of Mexicans, and they are not the people you would want to be doing a effective, compassionate job of doing something like that. And there's really wonderful parts about our American government and how they relate to all of this and how... Um, post-NAFTA and Proposition 187 um, really created like a border purgatory for people who were just trapped in the middle and didn't really have any way out. I make this book sound like it is really depressing and it definitely had really, really hard moments. And it had a lot of them, but it had really, really beautiful tales of survival and love and compassion in a world where It'd be so easy to lose your compassion and become really hardened. And I was very impressed with that. So I think that it's definitely worth a read. It's a quicker read. Um, again, it's just 16 essays, so it's not something you'd have to do and sit down and 
read all at once, but I would definitely recommend it. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'm happy to answer them for you. And if anyone wants to borrow my book, it is super highlighted, but I am happy to trade or let anybody borrow it. Thanks so much.